What's up, LTD addicts? Let's talk about ad page. If you run paid traffic for clients, you know how important landing pages are. You have to have great high converting landing pages so that your campaigns see results and your clients stay happy. Managing and building landing pages is what AdPage is all about. You might already be using an expensive service like Unbounce or Lead Pages, and you're wondering if AdPage can replace those services. Well, in this video, I'll walk you through the entire platform, show you the pros and cons of using it, so you can decide if it's a good investment for your business. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Dave from that LTD.life where I review software tools with lifetime offers. If you're into that sort of thing, I'd recommend clicking the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell to get notified when new reviews are posted. All right, let's head over to the AppSumo deal page for ad page. You can see that plans start out at 49 bucks here and let's talk you through what you're gonna get for your money. So you're gonna get unlimited pages, unlimited domains. Really the limitations come in in terms of how many clients you can manage. Uh, and there is a fixed number regardless of how many codes you stack. Each client account gets 100,000 visits per month. So uh, keep in mind if you're running the largest ad campaigns, those numbers might not be enough for you. However, for most people running ad, ad campaigns for local businesses or a you know a small blog or something like that, 100,000 visits uh, through ads is really, really quite a bit. So don't be scared away by that number. Aside from that, you're gonna get five clients per code that you stack and you can stack up to 10 codes. So you could manage up to 50 white label clients here uh, with the maximum allotment. Of course, then you're looking at $490. So that's not a small investment either. All right, let's head over to the ad page interface and take a look. Here you can see that it's asking me to set up my agency. Of course, I work for Client Amp, so I've entered in the name here. Uh, let's go to the next section where it's gonna ask for some brand assets. It wants a logo, an icon, a hero image, which is interesting. And then it also gives me some recommendations in terms of the size of these graphics. I'm gonna go ahead and upload these and I'll see you in a second. All right, I went ahead and uploaded my brand assets. You can see I have a logo, an icon, and a hero image here. But I wanna point out that I completely ignored the recommended sizes. I always like to test software to see how well it handles resizing images for me. Uh, you know, it's 2019, I really don't think I should have to worry about that. So I just uploaded the full resolution versions. It looks good in the preview. We'll see along the way, maybe I have broken something, but uh, that is yet to be decided. Let's continue to the next section here. Now it's gonna ask me for some brand colors. It looks like it wants a total of five different brand colors and it looks like it's gonna give me kind of a preview down here in the interface of what's going on. Now, one way to get your brand colors if you don't already have a sheet created with the hex codes is to install a Chrome extension. Uh, here I'm using one uh, that's called ColorZilla, very popular Chrome extension. And you can just head over to your website, pull out ColorZilla, and just do pick color from page. And you're probably gonna be able to find uh, the common colors that you're using. Now I'm gonna go up in the corner here and kind of grab this purplish color. Uh, I know I wanna use that. Of course, I'm gonna use black and white. So really, I just need two additional colors. Well, um, I think I could probably also pick maybe this center lighter blue color here, and then probably the color that we're using for our buttons, which is this orange color. All right, so now I've got five colors in total, including black and white. Let's head back over to the admin section of, uh, of ad page, excuse me, and we'll go ahead and paste these in. So with ColorZilla, it's really nice. It's gonna show you a color picked history. So I can go back, here's that purplish color, and I'll just be able to paste that in. And so I'll make that my primary color. Let's see what happens. It looks like it kind of is just black there. So uh, maybe, or maybe it hasn't rendered the preview yet. Oh, you know what it is? I didn't add, enter in a pound symbol. So now it's styling that pro appropriately. So for this secondary color here, I'm gonna go ahead and pick that lighter blue color. I'll go ahead and go back to my color picked history and find that one right here. And I'll copy this. And this time I'll make sure I include the hex code. There we go, so now I can see what that will look like. It looks like it's a, a totally different page. So the third color is this section right over here, and I decided I'm gonna use the same color that I used for the secondary color, which you can see was like kind of, looks like a tool tip or something that's popping up. Uh, so I made that the same, and I'm also gonna go back and change out this so it's a white logo. I think that would look better. Uh, the fourth color here looks like it's for some kind of modal pop-up background, and for this, I'm gonna use kind of an off gray color, 
Uh, so let's go ahead and try that. Looks very similar to what was there, it just has a little less of a blue hue. And the fifth color is this background right here. And I've actually just went ahead and used the same primary color for that. It was set to be kind of near black. So now what I'm gonna do is save this and just jump back and switch this out for a white logo. And I think it should be looking pretty good. All right, so I went ahead and updated that logo. I think it looks a lot better. Let's go ahead and move to the next section. And it says, heads up, you're good to go. You've successfully set up your agency. Now I just need to add a new customer. All right, let's go ahead and set up our first customer. There's two buttons here. They perform the same function to set up a customer. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in some fake information here and I'll see you in a second. All right, I went ahead and created some fake information for my pretend client here. And at the bottom of this form, I did notice something that was a little confusing to me. It wants me to put it into a folder and it says AppSumo and I actually spelled AppSumo wrong and put a space between App and Sumo. Uh, but it looks like I could potentially move this up to a different tiered plan. Maybe that's if I go over the 100,000 visits. I'm not really sure what this option is for. So I just wanted to point this out. All right, I've got my first customer added to the platform here. This is Johnny Big Ads, and you can see there are some options related to his account. I can view his usage, so these are essentially how many projects, domains, and most importantly, page views he's using, because that does have a limitation to it. Then there is the option to log into Johnny Big Ads account. Now this is really cool because I'll be able to see two things. One, I can create, a, create his landing pages and, and manage his account from here. But two, I'll be able to see the white label experience. So what is he seeing? How, how clean does that interface look? And we'll look at that in a second. You can disable the account so that if you're temporarily not going to be working together, you'd be able to disable it. Or if you know you're done altogether, hit this delete button and then you'll have erased him from your account altogether. All right, let's go ahead and click this login button and we'll begin to create a project. So I'm taken to a dashboard where hypothetically we'd see some statistics here. However, this is a new account, so there's none available. And then under projects, this is where we'll actually go ahead and create a new project. So let's click here to get started. And the first thing it does is ask me to choose a template. Now I will say right out of the gates that the template selection is not overwhelming. There are two for each category. So if I just look at the quizzes, you can see there's two templates there, webinars, two templates as well, and so forth. They don't look absolutely amazing either. They look fine, but they're, you know, nothing jaw dropping in terms of uh, landing page templates. We've been quite spoiled in the, you know, landing page world because we have services like Unbounce or Lead Pages, which have highly optimized templates that you can use. Uh, start with their designs, add your own content, your own photos, and you know you're going to be in a pretty good starting position. Also in the world of WordPress, you have things like Elementor or Astra starter sites, which have really great looking designs. You know, click one button and you've got this really great template. So I would definitely say that the templates leave a little bit to be desired here. Uh, kind of interesting, they add some skeletons. Now these are more like wireframes. So if you've got the ad copy, you've got images, it will make it easier to go ahead and get a decent looking landing page uh, without worrying too much about the layout, but then you're, you're kind of stuck stylizing the page yourself. So that's interesting. Let's go ahead and start one from scratch here. I'll click on blank page and we'll go ahead and move to the next section. Before I move to the next section, I have to give my project a name. All right, I've called it Johnny's Apple Shop, and let's go ahead and hit confirm here. All right, here is the landing page builder interface. And if you're familiar with landing pages, this will probably look somewhat familiar to you. The first thing it wants me to do is add a section. So I'll go up here and click on the triple dots, and I'm given an option for the different types of sections they have available. Uh, let's go ahead and just choose one. I think uh, this one looks fine, cover one. And you can see it kind of placed a layout for me. Now this is a little bit different if you're used to something like Elementor where you can just drag widgets in freely from the side and build things out exactly as you want. However, once you're here, of course you can still move these assets around. Uh, this just gives you a good kind of starting spot. So you can see here it says your logo. And of course what it wants you to do there is click and then choose this little picture icon so that you can upload your own image. Let me go ahead and do that. All right, you can see here I've got my logo uploaded. Now if I click on the image again, Again, I do have a few more options. I could click this up and down arrow and that allows me to uh, open up a drop down here where I can resize things. So 100% would be this big and I could uh, scale it down. Let's say I wanted it to be less, maybe 30%. There we go. So uh, that option is fine. It's nothing incredibly bad about it. Although it's a little bit clunky how I can actually just like type in a precise 
uh, number. That's what I'm accustomed to is setting like a precise width uh, or you know being able to dial it in by the pixel to get things to line up properly. So I don't know if 10% increments are gonna be finite enough uh, in order to stylize things as I'd like to see them. Then there's this uh, other kind of clunky element here, which is the page alignment. So typically you'll see this and there'll be three buttons, right? So a left align, a center align, and a right align. Well, with this functionality, each time I click it, it just kind of toggles through to the next one, which is fine. It's functional. It gets the same result. However, it's slow, right? So if I wanted to do this for, say, a dozen different elements on the page, man, that's going to be really tedious. And if you're doing this all day long, that ends up costing you minutes of your day uh, doing extra clicks. In fact, it gets worse because if I go down to this button, the option is even slower because now I don't see any alignment options here. I've actually got to click into the gear before I'm presented with that same clunky option. So now I'm clicking three times to align each item uh, that is a button. Now there's probably only four or five buttons on a landing page, uh, so not the end of the world, but still, it's just kind of a, you know, why would I wanna bother with this if I could use something like Elementor? All right, let's go ahead and see some of the other options here for the button. Of course, this is gonna allow me to change the color, and I could go ahead and select one down here, that's nice, and then I can choose the link right here and whether I want it to be uh, a pop-up, and I've got no pop-ups created. There's a pop-up builder we'll take a look at. Uh, by clicking this plus button, we can create a new pop-up. Uh, there is basically a little template here we can start with, uh, so that's really nice for opt-ins. It looks pretty good. If I click this gear, I can uh, set the background image, add a background uh, video. So these are all you know really nice options that we'd expect to see on any page builder. Uh, so I'm glad to see that they have the pixels uh, for padding. So you can set the padding to the correct pixel, not just like a percentage. So that's really nice. Uh, and of course we can change the cover color right here as well. All right, so let's close that up and back over to the button settings. I'm over here on the gear icon. There are some other options. We can change the border. So whether we want this to be a square button or one with rounded corners, we cannot change the radius of the button. So again, if you're used to building landing pages, these are things that are, are very common to do that you're just not able to do. Uh, we can change the type, whether we want this to be a solid outline or a uh, solid button. So Basically, it looks like it's going blank here, but that's because the text is white. So we'd have to change that text for it to make sense. Then we can change the size of the button, whether we want it to be small, medium, or large, or normal, they call it here. Uh, again, kind of strange that we can't set this more precisely in terms of the padding around the letters. Uh, and then the width, we can set this to be auto if we want it to automatically fill up the, the page. So right now it is not letting me choose that. Okay, there we go. Looks like, okay, this is kind of weird because maybe it has something to do with the custom colors that I set, but the highlights uh, are the ones I would just naturally kind of think are selected. Um, and this is sort of part of the problem with white labeling, right? If you're not sure what you're white labeling, um, you might make a bad user interface decision. So right now, when it's set to the same color as the background, that is the color that is selected. So uh, I probably want to go back to my white label colors and change the second, uh, the I think it was like color number five. Looks like that's kind of like the highlight color. So uh, I'd want to update that and be able to see more clearly which options were selected. So a little bit on my fault, but they could have also been more clear when we're setting up the white label colors this will be the accent color. And then I'd know, okay, make this, maybe that orange color would have been a better choice for this. So when I'm ready, I can click the triple dots down here to add a new section. You can choose from any of their sections, headers, footers, features, pricing, gallery, people. This would be like for testimonials. Uh, if you just wanna have some text, there are some options for that. It looks like there's an FAQ template or just add a blank section and go to town. So if I chose say, a pricing table here and added that, we'll see what that looks like. All right, so there is my pricing table. Now what's interesting to me is there's really no way to undo any changes once I've made them. So if I regretted adding this template, I've added it and you know I said really it just doesn't look so good. There's not any way to get rid of it. I could sure remove each element individually. However, that's still leaving a block holder here. And if I try to clear out this entirely, uh, again, there's really no way to make it completely go away. I've still got this column and I can't change the color of the background of the column for any way that I can see. I can hit the plus button here and add some new elements, but that's really not affording me the ability to edit the section in a way that I would be accustomed to. 
So I'll add into this little tangent here, there's no support for command or control Z for undoing things. In fact, I can find no real undo functionality at all. So let's say I change this price to be $69.95 and then I clicked away to go work on something else and I made some updates over here. Now, if I hit command Z, you'd think I'd be able to get this price to come back to the original price. However, there just doesn't seem to be any way to do that. In fact, I can't even find an option over here on the sidebar that indicates any sort of undo. Uh, so that's definitely an issue. Who wants to be using a uh, page builder where they're not able to make a mistake without fear of having to manually redo their original work? You might have noticed this gear icon over here to the right. This allows you to change the background color, set an image, or set a video, just like we saw in the pop-up builder. Uh, you can also change the padding here or the cover color so I can go ahead and darken this if I like uh, so that functionality is nice and, and what I'd expect in a page builder however I am struggling to find a way to actually change the color of these columns remember there was a default color that came in with this uh, template section that I added but there's no real clear way on how I can update this. So that's definitely a bit troubling. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the user interface. Over here on the left, we've got a save icon. Now, of course, when I click this, it goes ahead and saves my changes. However, I'm curious what happens if I were to try to make a change. Let's say I just added some text here and then I try to close the window. It just closes it, it didn't auto save it. So that could actually be a bit of a problem. Page, page builders like Elementor will pop up a little window and say, hey, before you leave this, do you know you have unsaved changes? And ask you to go ahead and save it. So let's head back to that page and find out if it was smart enough to auto save for me. I'm gonna go over to projects here and edit this project. And uh, let's see what it looks like if I scroll down. It did not save that text. So this is a real thing. Like people are in a hurry and they hit uh, command or control W to close the window. And then you'll lose all of your changes because there's no uh, notification to pop up to stop you. So that definitely concerns me. Uh, down here, we can see the pages that are added. Right now we only have the one page, which is titled home. I could create a new page right here give it a, a slug. And so basically we're building an entire website here if we wanted to. Uh, all right, let's continue down to the next section, uh, which is actually called sections. And here you can see each section on your website. As I hover over it, it scrolls to that section. That's a nice feature. I like that. I could also delete a section from here. Uh, it was unclear to me when I was actually using the page builder that I couldn't just like click somewhere to remove elements entirely. So it looks like you, you can't really. These are are built into the sections. So if you don't want to use this, there's no way to hide it. Uh, you'll have to go ahead and just find a different section, start with a blank section uh, if you don't want to use the template. So that is a little bit limiting. Let's move to the next section, which is appearance. So this is related to primarily the font settings. So we've got uh, options for our headings. Uh, we can change between different, looks like prim primarily Google fonts here, which are great. Uh, I'm happy with that. Then we've got uh, paragraphs down below. So this would be like the main text. You can see that'll update right here. And then the general color, which is gonna be like your call to action color. Really everything is the same here. So if I change this, everything changes. Now this is a big problem for conversion. So if I don't have any way to change this color, okay, I do. Uh, that's kind of interesting that they make you do that on a case by case basis though, because now what if I want to change all of these bullets? That's really time consuming. I've got to go through and paste the color in every single time. Uh, there's no way to just change the entire sections worth of bullets. So kind of another downside to using this page builder. Now, what I was getting at with this general color here is it's a very common practice for marketers to have their buttons stand out from everything else on the page. So I really wouldn't like to have my bullets be the same color as my buttons because it doesn't draw your eye as strongly to the button if everything matches. Uh, so maybe aesthetically not as pleasing. However, marketing isn't always about aesthetic pleasure. So let's move on to the next section here. It looks like there are some SEO settings. Uh, we can set the page title, the keywords that we're optimizing for, uh, a description of the page. I assume this would be like your metadata and your favicon as well as your OG image. So this is really good. Nice that they've included this here. Important stuff, even if you're running paid traffic. Hey, if you can start to rank for that page, you might as well get some free traffic as well. We can inject some code here. So if you want to insert, say, your, your pixels or your tracking codes, this can all uh, be easily inserted. And then down at the bottom here, we can build a menu out uh, so that you could have navigation between different pages. Now, most landing pages that I built for clients that we manage traffic for are just single pages, right? They, we want them 
not to really have any options to click around or do different things. So I don't know that I would necessarily use this for managing paid traffic, but maybe you need to uh, add a menu that has external links to maybe a, a booking page or a checkout page that goes back to the client's main site. I could see that being useful. We've got a preview option over here where we can see what the content would look like. Now I've deleted almost all of the content, but I can preview it on a laptop, a tablet, or a phone, which is nice. I could choose which page I was previewing as well. And if I was all set, I could click this publish button. So before I publish my project, I want to add a custom domain over here. I could do something like johnnybigads.com. Now, I, of course, I need to have purchased this URL ahead of time from something like Namecheap or Hover. Then I'll hit add domain over here, and it's going to give you some DNS settings you'll need to update over on the registrar, the place you bought the domain. Uh, it's going to ask you to create an A record. And then you'll enter in this IP address and you'll be good to go. Your account will be linked up and the pages that you publish will now be sent right over to that domain. You could also use a subdomain if you're doing this for a client. Chances are they already have a website. So you could do something like offer.clientswebsite.com, you know, whatever, whatever, uh, URL they're already using. You could just put something in the beginning there, similar to what we do uh, in the switchy video where we went ahead and created a subdomain so that we could shorten URLs using our primary domain. All right, just a few options over here on the dashboard before we go ahead and wrap this video up. We've got registrations, which are gonna allow you to register new clients uh, through a public forum, which is kind of interesting. I don't know that I would personally do this, but it's there if you would like that option. So you just click that and save the changes. There are some legal options over here they want you uh, to opt into. Basically, this is related to GDPR. So go ahead and check this out if it's relevant in the countries that you're advertising in. And then you also have this tag manager option, which is actually really cool because this will allow you to add Google Tag Manager to your user dashboard. Now, of course, you'll be able to get some analytics and things there, but you'll also be able to inject things like tooltip.io, which is a current AppSumo deal, so that you could maybe add some tooltips to the user interface, direct your clients where they need to go. You would just add those inside of your Google Tag Manager account, and then they would display inside of your ad page account. So that is pretty nice. All right, it's time for my final thoughts, and I'm not gonna hold back on this one. The world is really lucky to have Elementor in the WordPress repository. That's what this demonstrates to me. Building a page builder is hard. Ad page is trying here, and I gotta give them credit for that. Everything seems to be functional. None of their features are just flat out broken, which I, you know, that that's big because people do ship software where things just flat out don't work. However, the usability just isn't there. There's not enough customization. There's not enough control in terms of undo and duplication. So I got to say that this one really isn't worth using if you're comfortable with WordPress at all. If you're using something like Unbounce or Lead Pages, you're also probably going to want to stay with that solution, which I'm you know, disappointing to report because those services are very expensive. Hopefully ad page matures over a year or two and it becomes a more usable platform. But right now, if you're serious about building landing pages that convert highly, I can't really recommend this one. So I'm gonna give it a 5.9 out of 10. If this review has been helpful to you and you do go on to make a purchase at AppSumo, even if it's not for AdPage, I'd appreciate it if you click the link in the description. That is our referral link for the channel and it kicks us back a few bucks each time you make a purchase at AppSumo. If you have any questions about landing page builders, ad page, or really even just paid traffic in general, feel free to leave me a question down below. I'd be glad to help you out. I try to reply to each and every question, although YouTube is not always the best about sending me uh, those notifications. So if I take a little bit to get to you, I do apologize. If you like the video, make sure you click like so I know you appreciate the content, and I'll see you in the next review.